Hello, so my name's Michael Keneally and this is my part one video on the huge and so important astrology of September 2024. Um, the video and the blog covers very deep and utterly essential to know about vastly powerful and hugely complex <coughs> energies of, astro of the astrology of September 24. It's complex, but that does mean that we each so therefore do need to know about it. And above all, we need to hear the gems, <coughs> the spiritual gems that are amid the chaos of the astrology of September 2024. Now you can see the charts for both the Vedic and the Western astrology plus the ephemeris of both astrologies for September in my Star Wheel Astrology um, website under the More drop down. So in this part one video I now present the top four of the spiritual gems on offer that I'm so pleased to be sharing and they're so genuine. <clears throat> and then I outline for you the background picture of the planetary energies of September, which are quite fraught and therefore need to know about. For example, with both Venus in debilitation in Virgo and also Mars in super argumentative Gemini. Okay, so let's go into the wonderful spiritual gems that are on offer for us to perceive, understand, work with, internalise and grow with. <clears throat> well, number one is that there's a very special talent triangle. It forms now, lasting until June 2028. It consists of Pluto trying Uranus, where both Pluto and Uranus are sextile Neptune forming a triangle. And the offerings of that energies are immense and need to know about. The second item in this part one video is entitled Honour Your Current Revolution. A current of revolution has been running since certainly um, the 14th of July and it's so useful to hear the details of the energies and to see how well we are working with that current of revolution. The third topic is Saturn is powerfully retrograde in September and it's our call to consolidation and duty and karmic growth and the fourth item is that the Chiron's retrograde and four other planets retrograde so September is the time to progress the healing of our existential wound and consolidate and improve our life patterns. Okay, let's now start with the first of the big four and then go on to the review of all the other planets after reviewing the big four and the other planets are reviewed in part two. So the first topic <clears throat> is that there's a very special talent triangle forming now lasting until June 2028. As I said, it's Pluto trine Uranus, where both Pluto and Uranus are sextile Neptune. You can see the talent triangle really clearly if you go to my Star Wheel website and go to the September page, where indeed the charts for the two lunations very clearly show the triangle. This talent triangle, it's an aspect shape and its energy is such a great gift to our lives now 
especially if it aspects one of your key planets. So basically, Neptune sextile Pluto, one side of the triangle, definitely has the power and energy for connection to the supernatural in different ways. Basically, Pluto trine Uranus, the other side of the triangle, has the, the potential for revolution and empowerment through revolution. And basically, Uranus-Neptune, the third side of the triangle, has the power to arise in us subconscious powers and our inner vision. <clears throat> now, amazingly and unusually, these three planets move very slowly. And the point is that as they move, they actually keep the talent triangle in existence as they move through space until June 2028. What a wonderful gift for us to connect to. We so need to identify the energies, see how they apply to us, work with them, express them. So basically a talent triangle chart aspect shape indicates a talent which we need to develop in our life using the energies of the constituent planets of the talent triangle. You know, I beg you, don't neglect this opportunity. Assimilate and go for the new experiences that opening to these energies will bring to you. Be very acute in seeing what the energies are and assimilating them and working them. Be aware, be intuitive. Develop the talents qualities that I indicate here and above all let your own individual version of this special talent flower as the period unfolds and develops. The particular energy of a talent triangle is actually not to stress to develop the talent. They mature automatically if we connect to them. It's like to growing the talent is like nurturing a flower when, it's, when a talent triangle chart aspect shape is involved. And so what we need to do is to nurture and grow our connection to those three planets and their combination energy and add in the knowledge and skills each one of us needs to express our own individual version of this special talent over the upcoming period. You see, because there's two sex styles in the triangle figure, it has a Venus quality, you know, like blossoming. And if you keep working at it and growing the insights and carefully selecting <coughs> and deploying your goals, you will blossom from this wonderful connection. So looking at this month on the 1st of September, Pluto's at 5 Vedic Capricorn, Uranus is at 3 Taurus, trying Pluto, Nept <coughs> Neptune is at 4 Pisces, sextile Pluto and Uranus. Okay, let's look a little at the energies involved. What is the energy of Pluto? Well, basically it's power. It's transformation. It's death and rebirth. <clears throat> and we all need to embrace those Pluto qualities. Uranus, on the other hand, is the energy of revolution. Uranus was discovered at the time of the storming of the Bastille. And Uranus brings us wonderful insights. And Uranus offers us openings to freedom that the way we were brought up or the society we grew up in might be denying us. Uranus energy is original. Discover your Uranus energy, go for it. Thirdly, Neptune. Well, when Neptune's energy is used positively, its vision, its psychic ability, 
its tarot, its journey, its sensitivity, its intuition. So it's so important to know that these three planets form this special talent triangle to run on and off from now until June 2028. What a spiritual connection. What a spiritual combination. How wonderful is this offering to us? So what are each of us offered by these combined energies? Well, <clears throat> the combination of Uranus and Neptune at its best is subconscious powers and inner vision and inner illumination. The combination of Uranus-Pluto is revolution, the process of transformation, creative power, pioneering reform, bringing new things into being. And the combination of Neptune-Pluto at its best offers us contact with the supernatural, intense and purified soul life arising progressively from that. A super high degree of sensitiveness, mysticism, mediumship, occultism, spiritual evolution. So do make a special effort to connect to this particular engine now and in the years ahead to mid-28. Do the work, manifest. Indeed, book a reading with me where I can analyse what that energy specifically can mean for you and how it relates to the rest of your destiny and your astrology. Okay, the second major gem which we can connect to, and it's so important to connect to these, in the month of September, is the current of revolution, Mars, Uranus, Jupiter. This is a crucial call to each of us to manifest our needed revolution now in order to become more fully the man or woman who we incarnated to become. A major and powerful current of revolution has been running recently. <clears throat> this is firstly due to Mars transiting conjunct Uranus and the dreadful fixed star Algol at 2 Vedic Taurus, which was exact on the 14th of July. But then Mars moved onwards, forward, to conjunct Jupiter, exact at 22 Taurus, on the 14th of August. Now Mars Uranus is a most powerful energy of revolution. But Mars Jupiter gives more energy to that in terms of giving to that better and deeper qualities of spiritual perception and needed mental and spiritual expansion and blessing and enlargement and clearer sense of purpose and thus fuller connection to the divine. We're still all working with those two Mars hits to Uranus and Jupiter which occurred over the last two months. And so we have to work out how exactly is this affecting us personally. Again, you can get a reading from me. We each need to check out what house or life area is Taurus in our Vedic chart, but also checking out what houses and planets elsewhere in our birth chart are affected by this current of revolution energy. <coughs> I found it's very good to do vision work at this time to identify where the pull of revolution is working in our sense of self and the areas of our life now. We each of us need to be prepared to allow the needed revolution in. And this can be despite the fact that the final destination of the road we're treading isn't fully discernible. You know, I use, in addition to astrology, tarot and vision work and shamanic journeying. And I find this work so helpful and transformative. And I you can also include it in my readings. 
and do indeed note that at the very same time we're actually all helped in that visionary Neptune is conjunct the most dreadful fixed star energy of Sheat at 5 Pisces. Neptune is still at that, it was at that degree in July and it's still at that degree now in September. Now star Sheat is dreadful energy, it's the worst star energy. But if we can work with some area of meltdown of our barriers, you know, positive destruction, if we can cope with the feeling at times that we might even be going mad, then please realise that Star Shayat's energy can support liberating thought. It can unblock and free up our talents. It can promote rebirth in our sense of identity or in a particular area of our functioning of our life. So at this time, the intuitive visionary energy of Neptune conjunct Shayat, which could leave many people screaming in horror, can be used to help perceive and nurture our life area of needed revolution. We must each of us now be open to our barricades being stormed. We must each of us be open to our damaging defences that limit us being whittled down at this time. What life areas of yours need this revolution? The important thing is that as the start energies of this personal revolution of July and August become more in the past, <coughs> we must make the very special effort to keep them alive still. We must be prepared to explore them deeper. We must be prepared to manifest them more strongly. This is even though the start energy is becoming abated, but we still need to work on that star energy so as to implement our needed revolution, so as to better define our needed revolution. We have to decode how the Mars activation of Uranus, then Jupiter, relates to our personal life, our sense of self, our goals. We have to immerse in that energy and grow it. We each of us need to become the needed me. So point number three of the big four is about Saturn being retrograde in September. <clears throat> now Saturn anyway is our call to duty and, and karmic growth. But Saturn retrograde especially is our call to consolidation, duty and karmic growth. It's therefore a totally different but vastly strong energy running at the same time as the revolutionary Mars Uranus Jupiter energy that I've just described. We have to ride those two totally different horses. Saturn has been retrograde since June the 30th when Saturn was at 25 Vedic Aquarius. By the start of this month of September, Saturn is at 22 Vedic Aquarius. It doesn't rush. And Saturn will end September at 20 Aquarius. Note that Saturn continues retrograde until the 15th of November, when Saturn will be at 18 Aquarius. And then, having stationed, he turns direct. So it's a really big karmic demand on each of us to tie up the loose ends, to correct superficial behaviours or wrong behaviours, to check that we are honouring the karmas we incarnated to work on in this life. And in fact, our Vedic birth chart using the sidereal zodiac is a very good statement of the karmas we incarnated to work with in this life. But there are certain divisional charts like the D30 and the D60 which go into great depth about the energy of those karmas. 
And again, you can get a reading from me about your karmas. Although if you want me to go into the D30 and the D60, it would need an accurate birth time. But it's wonderful stuff. I mean, even the D2 divisional chart, the horror chart, H-O-R-A chart, is wonderful perception as to our karmas for our value issues, our gender issues. And you find out about them, if you do, when the time is right, hopefully. So this Saturn energy is a very big karmic demand for each one of us. Saturn retrograde energy sternly and even more strongly than direct Saturn calls on each one of us to identify our own individual karmas that have been applied to this life, to work on them, to be dutiful and to reap the harvest if we do the work. The truth is that if we ignore Saturn's karmic call, we, we create suffering suffering for ourselves, and it's our fault it's not saturn inflicting the suffering it's our failure to develop the perception and do the work and hopefully we learn from the suffering but if we discern the karmic call and do the work the reward is satisfaction and joy the reward is golden reaping Remember, Saturn was originally an agricultural deity. So it's so important to identify and know and work with our karmic scripts in this life. The position of Saturn in our birth chart is a very key statement as to some of the main karmas that we're in here to work with in this life now. But we also need the statements, as I said, of the D60, the Shashti Amsha divisional chart, the D30, the Trim Shamsha, the D9, the Navamsha, the D2, the Horror, and others. Now, if you're already okay with the basics of Vedic astrology up to the level of my level one course, then do enroll on my Varga course. You'll find my teaching so genuine and deep and completely geared to you as an individual, so very genuine and caring. You can see the details of my level one Vedic Astrology Foundation course on my Star Wheel Astrology website under the courses drop down. And also under that drop down, you can see the details of my Varga course. Now, key moments to look out for in this life are our Saturn transits our nodal return and nodal transits, our dashes, the wonderful Vedic predictive periods. These are such good guidance. Our Saturn transits are so important to understand, especially Sade Sate. Sade Sate is the period when Saturn transits through the sign before the natal moon, the sign of your natal moon and the sign after your natal moon especially Ashtamashani when Saturn transits through the 8th house from your ascendant or the 8th house from your moon. Massive changes are offered there. You know, if you're in that position, get a reading from me. It's so helpful to understand what is going on and when and to work out what you personally need to do about it to spiritually grow to be more successful and happy in this life. And by the way, it's important to know that Saturn is transiting square Jupiter for a long time around now. So this month, be aware that Jupiter transits Taurus from 22 to 26 Taurus, but at the same time, Saturn transits Aquarius from 22 to 20. And so, what we're offered is Saturn's karmic demands, Saturn's offer of golden reaping. But the guidance becoming available for meeting Saturn's demands of Jupiter's divine energy, which is expansion, blessing and sense of purpose. 
Okay, the fourth and final major point of wonder in the messy energies of September 2024 is that Chiron and four planets are retrograde. So, yes, Chiron is retrograde, but so are Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. So it's so important for us to be aware that the pre prevailing energies now are retrograde. It includes a huge retrograde energy. And so we're called to consolidate, to make up for missed calls of action, to review our scripts, to understand better and review our connection to each of our planets, to redo certain things, things we didn't do right or didn't do deep enough first time to complete incomplete energy calls to complete situations where we neglected what was important in our life and our spiritual growth and f messed and lost the opportunity we are each one of us called to become more responsible now and with Chiron retrograde at 29 Vedic Pisces, deep in the Pisces Aries Gandanta, there's, <clears throat> there's a very special call with lots of insights offered, if we're open, for each of us to identify better and more fully and more deeply our existential Chiron wound. You know, what planet is it conjunct or aspecting? What sign is it in? What house is it in? And then to do the work of healing, healing our existential wound and walking forward in life, unwounded, healed, powerful. Again, you can get a reading from me on your Chiron. So with Uranus retrograde from the first of this month, September, it's actually such a good time to bring in and attract the qualities needed for you to more solidly, reliably and informedly um, bring in what's needed for your personal revolution now. It's such a good time to bring in better realisation of what your needed revolution is all about now. It's such a good time to bring in some order and direction. Remember that Uranus is conjunct the dreadful fixed star Algol. But remember also that facing up to challenges, even terrible challenges, can bring us wisdom and spiritual success. This is the energy of Star Algol. So basically, this concludes the part one video. You can now go to the part two video, which is all about the energies of the other planets which are quite messy and difficult in September and so need to be understood and what I want to say is you know go to my Star Wheel Astrology website to see the charts for September Western and Vedic the ephemeris of the planet movements Western and Vedic and also you can book a reading from me See the many healings offered worldwide by my wife, Maggie Pashley. Indeed, if it applies to you, see our worldwide dating site for those on a spiritual pathway. Go to lovestardating.com. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified about when I put out a YouTube. Michael Keneally is the name of the channel, all one word. Do subscribe to my Star Wheel Astrology blog, which is called blog.starwheelastrology.com. And indeed, you can join our Star Wheel Astrology Facebook page. So, I feel it would be quite easy not to understand the difficult opportunities of September. It would be so easy to miss the opportunities of September. I feel blessed by the work I've done to identify the opportunities and to perfect my personal methods of deepening my insights and becoming more who I was meant to be 
and working thus better with others. So I hope the same comes to you in this month of September, where utter spiritual gems are offered at the same time as really messy, aggravated, debilitated energies. So now, go to video part two. Thank you.